Just ask two quick ones. Um, when David Beckham flashes up on your phone, what, what, what are you thinking? What did you think he was calling you about? Um, don't know what I thought, really. Uh, put a big smile on my face, I would say. Um, but yeah, he, when he, when he phoned me a couple of days after the Scotland game, so I had a good idea that it probably would be about that. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, it was uh, it was amazing to speak to him and uh, to for, for him to get his message across to me. And um, obviously, I've watched his documentary and it was really inspiring. So um, yeah, he's a he's a he's a role model to me. And just on um, the feeling that you had it at the end of the Brentford game, not in terms of the, the victory, but in terms of how you felt yourself. Did, did you feel like I'm back, I've made a, a big step forward in my career again here? Or, or did you think this is just like a little baby step? I don't, I don't know what, if I'll start the next game. I mean, how's your way up all that situation? Yeah, it's not, it's not my decision whether I start the next game or not. So um I'm unsure on that. I'm sure in a couple of weeks we'll go back and we'll, and we'll find out. But no, I think. Um, listen, if you if you look back at my last 15 to 20 starts for club and country, I'd, I'd be really I'd be happy to sit here and say I've, I'm really happy with my performances. My record um, under this manager speaks for itself. Um, I haven't started as many games as I'd like, but my win percentage when I've played is is ridiculously high. And of course, there's times when I can do more, and times then I can improve and 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 help the team. Um, but yeah, I'm just wanting to help the team. I'm wanting it to to help the team get out of this position that we're in at the moment. Um, and hopefully, we can do that in the coming weeks. Chris, then Andy. Just kind of on that, Harry. What, there's been a lot of talk about players' relationships with the manager at Man United. What what is your relationship like with him, and what gives you the confidence that you can? Show them that you you should be starting more. Yeah, I think I can only do what I've been doing in terms of when I'm coming into the team, um, bringing positive performances. Um, I think obviously I've started two games this season and, and come on in a few in, off the bench. Um, but yeah, keep keep working hard in training. I think the manager can only to, can only watch training and make his decision from training and the games when I get the opportunity to play. So so I'll keep working hard. I'll keep pushing. Um, I have great belief in, in myself and um, I'm sure there'll be opportunities to come because as we know in the Premier League and when you're in all these competitions there's many many games and um, unfortunately injuries are part and parcel of football and, and players get them so I'm sure there'll be many opportunities to come. Andy? Hey, how do you say, follow on from what Chris has said, um, has it been a shock to you that you've fallen down a peck or there? And how have you coped as well with, you obviously speak with great pride, understandably, about your three and a half years as captain. How have you coped with having that captaincy taken away from you? Obviously, I, like I said, I, I believe in my ability and what I've done in my, in my career, um, as every player should. Um, every player should, who's on the bench, should believe that they should be starting. Um, otherwise, they wouldn't be playing at a high level. So, so I'm no different. Um, Listen, it's been tough. I, I want to play games. I want to be. I want to feel important to the club, and I want to feel important to, to the rest of the team. Um, at the moment, I haven't been playing nowhere near as much as I'd like. It's it's the bottom line of it, um, and I've just got to make sure that I'm ready to to, to, to take the opportunities when they come along. When does the, sorry, when does the game time become an issue? You keep mentioning game time before. You know, you've only got one transfer window until the Euros. When does that become an issue? Game time, particularly in relation to. Yeah, of course. I, I mean, I'm not going to sit here all my life and, and, and play once um, every month. And if, if it carries on, then I'm sure myself and the club will sit down and, and have a chat about things. Um, but honestly, at the moment, I'm fully focused on the two games for England, two big games. And then I'm fully focused on, on, on fighting and trying to get back my, my place at Manchester United and helping the team um, climb up the league uh, to where we should be. Okay, that's my last few quick, Jacob. Um, Harry, do you find yourself having to sort of ignore maybe some of the stuff that you receive on social media? Are you able to look at any of the things that you get sent anymore? And just from a general perspective, with how negative that, that place can be now, do you worry about the impact it has on other players, young players as well? 
Yeah, I don't, I don't read anything on social media, if I'm being honest. So, um, yeah, I think, listen, social media is a big part of the world now. That's, that's the way it's gone. And that's the way football is in, involved heavily on social media. And, of course, it will impact a lot of players, and um, especially the younger players growing up now. Um, social media is part of it, and they're, they're going to have to accept that it is. Um, and it'll be tough for, for the young players, but the, the, the main advice is, I'd say, is um, don't read it, come off it, um, speak to, to, to the people um, who are close to you. And the, the most important thing is, is your managers and your staff and your players, how much they respect you. Um, so, yeah, um, we speak about it at Manchester United, of course, because it's such a big part of the club. Um, but the bubble that we, we have and the spotlights on us, we, we need to, to, to keep that bubble strong and, um, and, and, and you get that belief and confidence from within that. Did, did, you, did you used to read it? And is that something that you've stopped doing recently? Um, I haven't read it for a number of years, to be honest. I think, listen, I'm not going to sit here and say I don't see anything. Um, of course, I see, I see things. I post on my... Um, on my social media myself, um, but he's, he's supposed and if I, I come off, I, I don't flick through the comments. Um, but yeah, I think it's, um, like I said, it's part and parcel of football and um, it'll be tough, I'm sure, for, for many young players who come into the game, um, but I'm, I'm sure clubs now have got to start looking at uh, ways and, and help to, to, to give them young players and advice um, in how to deal with that. Sorry, Harry, you, you spoke about the I'm just wondering, are there any similarities between the two? Because on the outside, they seem very different characters. The, from the Eric Tenag and Gareth Southgate, they both seem very different characters. They're both very publicly supportive of you, but are there any differences, similarities in the messages they give you and, and, and the way they act with you? No, I'm, obviously, I appreciate all the support that they give me and um, uh, to the media and things, and obviously to myself as well. So. Um, there's a there's a few similarities, but I think you probably know is if you inter interview Gareth and interview Eric, there will be a, a lot of difference as well. So um, no, the, the, there's different styles, different plays, but of course there's there's different ways that they both manage. Um, I wouldn't say there's too much similar. Harry, your um, your mum came out and staunchly defended you after that Scotland game. I know you say you don't read much on social media, but I presume you're aware of that. I think we can all understand a mother doing that for their son, but what did you think when you saw it? Was it helpful? Um, it's, if she felt like that and felt like she, she wanted to do that, then I fully support her in, in, in terms of that. Um, my mum's been a big part of my career. Um, she's someone who I go to for support. And um, she was in the stands uh, in the Scotland game, so she probably felt affected by it. Um, and annoyed by it, um, but no, I think, like I said, she's probably more worried for, for myself, but I reiterate to her that I'm, I'm all good and um, I'm strong mentally um, and I can deal with it. So yeah, it, it probably does affect them. Like I say, it probably affects them a lot more than, than it does myself um, because they have obviously do, do get affected by it, but then they also worry for, for me and, and how I'm dealing with it. But um, yeah, I, I reiterate to her all the time that I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much, everyone. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, guys.